Well, the clock is ticking on international climate talks in Egypt. COP27 is scheduled to wrap up tomorrow. Delegates agree more action needs to be taken to minimize the impacts of climate change. But hammering out the details of how exactly that will happen, well, that work is still in progress. CBC's Sarah Larnuk joins us now live from London. Sarah, a draft copy, as I mentioned, of the COP27 text has been released. What are the key standout points? So this text is meant to be a cover letter for the agreement that will be signed on to by countries at the closing of the conference. And it's meant to be an overview of the nitty gritty details that are being ironed out by negotiators at the conference. And so there were three things that people were really watching for as this draft came out. First, people wanted to see if the target of limiting warming to one and a half degrees Celsius would remain in the text. It was included in last year's agreement in Glasgow, but there was this fear that countries would actually backtrack to the language used in 2015 in Paris, which was less ambitious and only committed to limiting warming to well below two degrees. The next thing delegates were watching for was if it would call for a phase out or phase down of fossil fuels. But this text only mentions coal, not oil or gas. Simon Donner is a climate scientist at UBC and he's in Sharm El Sheikh this week, and he said, sadly, it didn't surprise him at all that oil and gas weren't mentioned in this text. Take a listen. What's important about this is that last year, the mention of phasing down coal was the first time fossil fuels were ever mentioned in any of these uh, agreements. So it actually was a big step. It sounds crazy that fossil fuels have never been mentioned in a global climate agreement, but it's very hard to get that to happen when you have countries whose entire existence is based on fossil fuels, Saudi Arabia and others, because they'll always fight it. The third thing that we were looking for was loss and damages. Developing nations, including the host country, Egypt, have been asking for an agreement on how they will be compensated for the damage climate chaos is causing them. This was also absent from the text. Pakistan's climate minister, Sherry Rahman, said at least a statement of intent has to come out of these last days of negotiations. But so far, there's no indication that this will happen this year. Okay, so Sarah, where does this leave us in terms of the negotiations then? This text is just meant to be a summary, right? But it's long, it's 20 pages, and it includes all kinds of things from all different kinds of topics. Simon Donner, when I spoke with him this morning, said it indicated to him that negotiations are unlikely to wrap up by tomorrow when they're supposed to end, and they'll likely stretch through the weekend. But more importantly, the length said to him that it indicates a lack of focus. Here's more of what he had to say. It's just a lot there. Um, uh, it's, quite, it's kind of surprising. I do expect that there'll be progress on loss and damage. I think it's uh, very important to the leadership and a lot of countries that are here. Uh, and there'll be some marginal, I think, progress on what a future plan for climate finance might look like, but it's sort of only gonna be step one. Uh, and beyond that, I think it's really gonna depend on the really heavy political consultations that are coming. So there is this hope that more progress could still be made from this point, but generally the draft text is actually more aggressive than the final text that leaders sign on to at the end of the conference. So for this draft to be so mild in its goals is really demoralizing to a lot of people. Okay, CBC Sarah Larnuk in London, thanks so much.